Okay, we're gonna talk about sewing notions. So if you're just beginning sewing, you might have no idea of what kind of tools you're going to need or how much investment it's gonna cost you. I would say to get the basic supplies, you may be looking at 40 or $50, and that's even um, probably more than you really need to have. The very basic things are going to be scissors. So you need a small pair for clipping threads and a larger pair for cutting fabric. Um, this actually is my fabric scissors. And then I have a pair that I keep in my sewing area just for cutting paper, for cutting out patterns. So do not use your fabric scissors for cutting out patterns. It's really important. They go dull, it ruins the scissors, and um, they're too expensive to, to have that happen. So make sure you have one pair designated for fabric, one pair designated for paper, and um, don't let your family get a hold of them either. They can ruin things without knowing what they're doing. So those are important tools. Um, you may also want to have a set of clippers. These are easy to maneuver and they're great for clipping little threads. I don't use them quite as often as my scissors, um, but they're good to have. A seam ripper is a must. I like this one because it's got a larger handle. You can buy them in different sizes um, and at least one seam ripper. Many of us have them kind of all over our sewing area because we use them a lot. Um, my favorite tool has to be these little tweezers. So these are available online uh, and I'll find a link for you in the notes. Um, they are the best for pulling thread through a needle on the machine or threading the serger. We'll get to that later. But I use these tweezers for a lot of things and they're really handy to have in your sewing area. Another popular tool these days is the rotary cutter and they come in a couple of different sizes. I would just get a medium to large size. Um, they're quite easy to use. They are rather dangerous, so if you have small children, keep them away from your children. You will also need some extra blades for it and then a cutting mat. Uh, the mat I have is 18 by 24 inches and it's kind of a good basic size. These mats are plastic and they're quite expensive if you buy the large ones. Some people like to cut out their patterns on a mat and they buy the largest size they can get and then they just use the rotary cutter to cut out the fabric. I personally don't do that, but some people find that it's quick and easy um, and that's their preference. So you do whatever works for you. I use it mostly for cutting bias binding and for small projects. You will also need to have at least one tape measure they are vinyl, they do stretch, they sometimes break, and they cut very easily. I've cut them in half more times than I care to admit. So keep at least a couple of them um, in your sewing box and have them handy. They come in different lengths too. I like them longer, um, rather tall, and for me measuring, um, it just works better to have a longer one. So one of my other absolute necessities in the sewing room is called fray check. It's a liquid. You dab it on the end of a seam and it hardens clear and like plastic and it keeps things from unraveling. And it's a tool I use all the time. So make sure you have that in your arsenal. Uh, for hand sewing, many of us like a thimble. Um, this one was my grandmother's. Honestly, I don't really use it. Uh, very rare that I use a thimble when I hand sew, but um, a lot of people do that, so you might want to have one of those. Uh, pin cushion is, of course, a necessity. I like this wool one. Um, it was a handmade gift from someone, and I love it because I can just stab anything in there. Um, I also have this separate one that I use for my hand sewing needles, and uh, that's a good idea, too, to have a place to put your hand sewing needles, keep them kind of separate from everything else so that they're easy to find, and um, they're not in with the pins. They can get lost and pretty much gone forever if they're in with the pins because you can't see them. So there's that and then thread. My personal preference is 100% cotton quilting thread. I find that it's more economical. It comes in a little bit larger spool, lasts longer, and that's just what I prefer to sew with most of the time. It works for most fabrics. You can buy all-purpose thread uh, Coates and Clark is a popular brand. There are other ones. 
There's nothing wrong with all-purpose thread other than I find it runs out too quickly and I always have problems with the thread getting caught on these spools and it's just is an irritation to me so I don't use it. I prefer this. When we get to serging and that type of thing, there will be more thread involved, but these are the very basics. So let's talk about, um, oh wait, two more, two more things. Rulers. I have several rulers I keep in my sewing room and I use them for a lot of different things. I use it for cutting bias binding. I use it for measuring hemlines, um, shortening sleeves, that type of thing. This is a two inch wide clear plastic quilting ruler. It has um, all kinds of markings with an eighth of an inch on it, and I use that one the most. Uh, the other one I have is this Dritz hemline ruler. It has a slide on it, so you can decide where you want your hem to be, and then it's just easy to lay it against the fold of the fabric, and you'll know exactly where um, that needs to be folded uh, on your garment. I use this a lot, I probably have at least two of those. Uh, and then I have a one inch ruler, uh, similar to this one, but a one inch wide that I use for seam allowances and so forth. So I would recommend you have several rulers in your sewing area. Um, if anything else, just a regular 12 inch ruler will definitely work to start with. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about patterns and fabrics and how to choose what kind of fabric for the pattern. So in the fabric store, you will see there are um, a multitude of different companies, obviously, that have fa uh, patterns available. On the back of the envelope, it will have all kinds of details on the style, as well as what kind of fabric to use. If you look at my other video, I have a detailed description of what everything is on the back of the envelope. For now, as a beginner, it, you just need to know the basics. So um, other than your measurements, I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. Um, you'll need to know your size, so you choose that after you know your measurements. And then um, it'll give you some information about what kind of fabrics works best for the particular style that you're looking at on the envelope. I have similar setup on my own patterns, the paper version or online also, it has the same things. There's also a um, guide for fabrics that stretch. So if you've never sewn with stretchy knits before, there is a big variety of knits on the market. Some stretch more than others and it depends on what your requirements are for the pattern, uh, which fabric you choose. So if you lay your fabric with the fold here and pull it off to the side, it'll tell you if it's the right type of fabric for that pattern. Very helpful. It's hard to find on a lot of these commercial envelopes. Like here, it's, it's here on the very edge, this blue line at the bottom. That's the stretch guide, and you wouldn't even know it was there. Um, you could look right past it. So it'll have the basics of the style, tell you what level it is, what kind of figure it's good for, um, and then fabric suggestions and yardage amounts. So always buy extra yardage for your projects. Um, you never know when you need to recut a piece and you'll want to have a few extra inches, if not at least a quarter yard or half a yard extra fabric for each project that you're working on. I guess that's it for now. We'll see you in the next video where we are going to talk about measuring.